Hello and welcome. My name is Zach. I started turn racing as an enthusiast sim racer with the vision of merging the gap between real world racing and sim racing. Everything I do is self-taught. So if there's any professionals out there, I'm sure I'll make mistakes and appreciate any feedback. But today I'll be starting a series that I hope to do for a while where I take a wheel and show how I design and build it from start to finish. Today, I'll be uh, all in CAD and then in the episodes that come, I'll be showing how I make and assemble everything. What I have is about nine hours of video that I have sped up to get it to give a good idea of my process. I know it goes fast, but don't worry since I'm going to be making this project open source, I'll have the Fusion 360 files and uh, STL files available to download later for those that want to try to make their own. So let's just get into it. Okay, so we're starting from scratch here in Fusion 360. Uh, what I did was I found a number of uh, reference photos online and I found the one that was best. It was a good straight on angle. Uh, then what I'll do is I'll go in and uh, make it to scale. I do about 300 mi uh, millimeter diameter. And then I start with sketching the front plate. Um, and so what I'm doing here is just using the spline tool and then I'll go in and mirror everything over to the other side uh, because this camera angle obviously isn't perfectly straight on. So um, I'll be going back and forth in between a lot of the reference photos that I have. Uh, lucky enough, a lot of these components I use for other wheels too, like the Leo Bodner PCB. I just kind of uh, made that file, you know, last year. Um, along with some of the other components. So luckily enough, I already have those on file, so we'll just be importing them into this file. So what I'm doing here is just kind of getting my kind of master sketch uh, that everything will be based off of. So, uh, w from there, I'll be designing all of the other components. I start with the front plate, and then I will uh, build all of everything around that front plate. Um, also, one of the things with designing something like this is there's kind of a sweet spot from making it an exact replica to uh, making it affordable and and easily to manufacture and make. Um, I mean, you could go in and spend, you know, a lot more time getting it absolutely perfect. If I had better reference photos, um, if, you know, a driver that I've had, you know, different drivers before that have uh, driven the car of the wheel that I'm designing. So they would send me some awesome reference photos so I can, you know, get a better idea of how the wheel is built. For this one, I just have about half a dozen good pictures that I am going from that I found on the internet so not super good uh, information so there's some parts like these button inserts I could couldn't quite figure out how they were uh, getting it to mount to that front plate um, my guess is they're using a button that's long enough that the screw on the back of the button is holding it in place. But that's another thing is sourcing a lot of the equipment and hardware. Um, so yeah, you can see here, uh, one of the hard parts, hardest parts is actually uh, doing the grips because that is a lot of sculpting. Um, lucky enough, I've, I'm definitely not a pro at this. Um, just kind of been doing it for a year or two starting to get better at it but um, yeah certainly by no means am I an industrial designer or engineer so it's just kind of a guesstimation um, you know see what looks good also um, kind of figure out I figured out a way to design wheels to design the grips so that I know how it kind of feel you know I can design it because so, I know what feels good to um, and so you can see here, yeah, it's just kind of going back and forth, um, zooming around. I use the 3D Connection Space Mouse. If you're going to be serious about design, I would highly recommend it. It's a good investment, and I absolutely love it. Um, 
especially for doing stuff like this here because you're constantly like going back and forth between angles to see you know is it too thick here is it too thin here i'm planning on 3d printing these grips what i'll be doing in the next video is i'll show how i uh, slice it and uh, how i'll print those and then also how i will uh, suede wrap them the reason i'm going that route versus the silicone mold and polyurethane rubber like i do for all my other wheels is uh, since this is a one-off wheel it's kind of more of meant to be an open source project for the DIY people versus it being an actual product in my website. Um, you know, I guess if people are interested, you know, you can certainly shoot me a message, but it will not be cheap. Um, I'll just say that just because something like this will take a lot of extra time and uh, I just don't have a process for it uh, in place. And I am kind of focusing production more on the R1, um, my R8 lineup, and the soon to be R20. So that is exciting. Um, another thing about the polyurethane grips is uh, since it is a lot harder, it's more rigid, uh, more impact resistant, and of course you're going to get more feel out of the wheel since all that rubber, all that hard rubber is actually bonded to the wheel versus um, just kind of being glued on there and then wrapped in suede. So here I'm starting to do work more on the uh, rear button covers now. Those will also be 3D printed along with those front uh, button inserts. It, uh, I mean, it's again hard to tell from the pictures. Uh, I mean, if I had a good close-up view, I'd know for sure if what they were doing uh, was 3D printing as well. But um, yeah, it works for me. It's also cheap and uh, all of us at home can do it. My guess is if they were uh, 3D printing, they did it in a much more expensive SLS uh, machine versus the Prusa i3 Mark III that I have uh, FDM. It's never going to be quite as high detail, but um, yeah, I mean, I can just do it right at home. And, uh, you know, for the most of uh, majority of people, really that kind of stuff doesn't matter. Also, you can, you know, print it with a much higher detail. It takes a lot longer, but for something like this where I'm not going to be doing a production run of it, uh, you know, I can just set it and forget it, basically. Uh, I'm also working on trying to get this hub, how, like how I'm going to figure out how to design that, because there, the reference photo is not very good at all. Uh, so it's pretty much just kind of getting an idea of how they're doing it. Also, I mean, I'm of course using different electronics. I prefer Leo Bodner. Some people use cheaper Arduino stuff that is smaller. And so, it, you know, it's easier to hide that PCB, but I like doing it with the Leo Bodner BU0836 uh, with the breakout board, because then if there are, is ever a failure of the button or of a rotary encoder or a shifter, they are easily replaceable uh, okay so here i am working again on the design of that hub uh, i am putting together the rear carbon fiber plate i'm going to be machining that on my cnc machine which i'll be showing in my next video of cad and uh, i'm sorry cam and the machining and printing of everything this is a Lumberg connector. It is a very high quality, relatively inexpensive connector. I don't have the exact part number. I can certainly uh, link that down below. I can actually link to, uh, I can link all of the hardware that uh, I am going to be building this from so that it is much more easy to source because it has taken me a long time and a lot of money to find good equipment to source. Uh, I have a few preferred vendors for different things like carbon fiber. Um, a lot of people just buy cheap carbon fiber from China. I prefer to go with much more high quality stuff. And now we're getting the uh, hub together. We're getting kind of all of the rear electronics together. I'm going to be using the Precision Design Works paddle shifters. They are the closest thing to 
what is being used here. I don't know who the manufacturer of these are, but uh, yeah, PDW shifters. They are very good. Uh, billet aluminum machined and I would highly recommend Right here, I'm working on the uh, shifter paddle. I found a good reference photo, kind of just scaled it, see what would work. Uh, right now, I'm just getting the bolt pattern in. But uh, kind of more of a guess than a real science. You know, if I had a really good shot of the back, I could have it be uh, much more precise to uh, the real wheel. But uh, here, I can get a pretty good guesstimate of how that paddle shifter looks. I'll also be machining these on my own uh, CNC machine as well. All out of four millimeter carbon fiber. I do have, I'm gonna have to decide which vendor I decide to go with because I have a vendor for gloss carbon fiber, but it is, um, not it's only one-sided so the back side is uh like really bumpy and ugly and then the good side is like fancy and gloss versus um the more expensive two-sided carbon fiber but it is matte even though the real wheel uses a gloss finish so i don't know i guess i'll just have to decide what i want to go with that probably the two-sided because it looks better and is uh, a lot more a lot more consistent in thickness and so here I'm just kind of putting on all of the bolts all of the hardware um, I upgrade those or I down upload download whatever from McMaster you can get those um, and then now is the graphic design uh, so what I'm doing is getting a picture uh, getting a DXF of those uh, stickers I'm gonna be making the stickers myself as well and then once I have that DXF of the shape that I want I'm going to put it into uh, Illustrator I'll fix the lines uh, and get it into a good solid vector because fusion is horrible at exporting DXF so then what I'm doing here is I'm putting the I had to do a bunch of messing around to get the thing right but yeah so now I'm fixing it um, I am joining all of the lines getting a good vector and then I will be uh, for this is kind of just you know trying to make it look pretty for the render because um, then I can export the PNG and then put it on uh, the uh, fusion file as a decal but I uh, so that's one thing about doing this kind of stuff is you kind of need to learn a lot of different software so um, it's taken me a long time and a lot of money but I have figured it out I am completely self-taught by no means am I a professional I've only been doing it for about a year and a half like steadily uh, I'm getting better but by no means do I consider myself a pro more of a hobbyist that just does it a lot uh, here I'm just looking for the uh, Aston logo without a background um, just kind of doing a lot of finagling around because they said they were PNG but they all had backgrounds uh, so I found one um, I'm not sure how I certainly can't make that so I'm hoping that I'll be able to find one online maybe on ebay or something getting that badge uh, also the rotary encoders i will probably be going with the hrs uh, aluminum knobs they are not exact replicas i could 3d print them but i would much prefer to have a nice anodized aluminum knob that isn't exactly the same versus a 3d printed knob that is and here I am uh, doing the render and I also did all of the buttons 
Unfortunately, I was not able to figure out uh, how to... I exported each of these buttons out as a PNG because I was hoping to uh, put them on the Fusion render. But since all of my buttons in the Fusion file were uh, copy and pasted, they're all somehow connected. And so when you put the sticker on one button, it puts them on all of them. I'm sure there's a way around it. but I just decided for the final render to go without because uh, for the real wheel I will print these uh, and put them on the real wheel but yeah just for the render I had already spent like seven hours this day uh, designing this and so I kind of was just like in screw it mode and I wanted to get it done because I have about 20 steering wheels to make and I am about four weeks behind on orders so yeah um, here we are getting everything together I am in the uh, render I'm rendering it out as a one-to-one -one aspect ratio because I was gonna these are the pictures that I sent out on my social media platforms uh, and there you have it, a nice, fancy, pantsy AMG Aston Martin Vantage GTE Sim Steering Wheel. And then I have one final animation uh, showing all the parts, exploding it out. If you stuck around this long, I super duper appreciate it. I'm still kind of learning. I had to learn premiere pro just to make this video uh, so a lot more to come in the next episode we will be doing like i've said before we'll be doing the cam we will be doing uh, the machining and uh, maybe a few other bits and pieces and uh, yeah i think it'll be a fun series if you have any questions or comments would definitely appreciate any feedback i am new to youtube still but uh yeah i think that this will be something that i can kind of keep going for a while i think it'll be a lot of fun a lot of engagement and i hope to see you soon